Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. This is Vidhan Agrawal, CD 2020, 99.99% I love. And as you all already know, we are taking interviews of CD 2022 toppers. And today we have Saniya Kadam with us. She had scored 99.95 percentile right now studying in JVMS. And uh, so Saniya, could you just quickly tell us something about yourself so that viewers know what your background is and how many attempts did you give for CD when you crack it? Yeah. So thanks, Vidhan. So my name is Sanika Kadam and I have graduated from Vezit Mumbai in 2019. Uh, I'm an engineer. So post my graduation, I worked for two years uh, at Accenture as a software developer. Uh, after that, I took a gap to prepare for my MBA entrances. All right. So I forgot to congratulate you for your score. So congratulations for scoring 99.95 and getting into JVMS. Thank you so much. How was your experience so far in JVMS? So JVMS has been great. So actually when the results were out, it was my birthday. So this was the best gift I oh, could yeah. have. Really? Yeah. So after that, uh, it's been around two months since the college has started and it's going great. Perfect. So Sanya, you had told us that you completed your engineering in 2019, right? Yes. So you had given two CDs, right? Yes. So how much did you score in your first CET? Uh, so first CET was just like, I was just testing the water. So I had given a few mocks. So I scored 94. And then this year, like the 2022, I scored 99.95. But for someone who is scoring 94 percentile, he or she would always think ki, to get into JVMS, you have to score 99.94. And right now I've scored just 94 percentile. So how did you get that confidence or, you know, even the uh, <clears throat> will to study even more to get into JVMS? Uh, so I was clear that I had to do my MBA from top 10, top 15 colleges. So I'd also attempted CAT and other exams. So uh, it was clear that when I got 94, I decided I would give another attempt at all the exams, including CET, CAT and everything. So, so the motivation was that you know that uh, if you pass out from these colleges or you are able to expose to these colleges, you ha you'll have another shot at life. So, yeah, so that was the motivation. Perfect. So what all courses you had joined, different classes that you have joined and the mock providers? For CET uh, this year? Yeah. Uh, so I had joined around four to five mock tests. Uh, so it was IMS, uh, C taking, Test Funda, ELC, and Patrick. Oh, so so often our aspirants are confused that which mock they should go for, which is the toughest, which is the easiest, and which is the moderate one. So could you, since you have taken five uh, different mock providers, could you tell our aspirants that which one was the toughest, which one was the easiest, which one they could go for? What do you think? Uh, so I don't think there is such like tough mock or easy mock as such. So for different providers, there are different kind of difficulty levels. So for CE taking, for example, you have two different mocks, the basic ones and the advanced ones. So if you have to build up your concepts and everything, you can start with the basics and then move to the advanced mocks. Same with the uh, test funda, ELC, IMS, they all have comparable level of difficulties. Um, so I think the interface makes much of a difference. For example, in some mocks, you can judge your performance based on the toppers that are there in that specific mocks. So based on that, you can choose. So every every uh, mock provider gives one free mock, right? So you can take that mock, see for yourself if you like the interface, if you like whatever info they are providing to you. And if it is adding value to our preparation, then you can take it. That's but like I would suggest... Uh -huh. Yeah, but I would suggest take more than two, at least two, three mock providers so that you get a range of questions to prepare from. Yeah, you can even go for those classes where a lot of students give CET mock so that you can yeah. you know, compare yourself with them, see where you're standing. And actually that would give you a feeling of a CET. Yeah, right. Perfect. So since you have taken five uh, mock providers, could you tell us approximately how many mocks you take for uh, before attempting CET? Uh, so for CET, I took around 70, 75 mocks. So I had a lot of time at my hands, right? So it was postponed. So I started my prep from Feb, 
so till august i had a lot of time so i gave a lot of mocks so like was it uh, every second day that you used to take a mock or only on weekends how was it uh initially i used to take one or two mock weekly and as the exam was approaching so last 2 3 months of the exam i used to take three mocks per week minimum got it okay yeah. and was there any specific area which you really liked in cd and an area which was really difficult for you if yes and how did you overcome that difficulty uh okay so my favorite section was vrc so i was good at it i didn't need to prepare much for it uh but quants was my weaker section like the weakest section so i know engineers generally don't have that as a weak section mm-hmm. but uh for me it wasn't like that um uh, i wasn't weak at the subject per se but the speed aspect of cet right so whenever a question used to come on the screen i used to just stare at the question for some time and then start solving it whereas ideally you should start solving it in your mind as soon as you see the question so that took a lot of time for me but so whenever when i reached a certain score and it hit a plateau that was when i joined ttp and especially the quant section as like the quant uh, tutorials i used to go through them and see the shortcuts and tricks that are mentioned there so i used to try it in my mocks so yeah that helped but so guys just for information sanika was a student as well she had taken our course <coughs> the mocks and she had access to all the mentoring sessions the doubt solving sessions the whatsapp group and so since she was not great with quants and she's saying that she had taken a course and in our course we have a lot of shortcuts a lot of tricks that we had actually used during our cd so i'm sure that would have helped sanika to you know overcome that difficulty in quants yeah perfect so before you joined tdp what were your scores like in the mocks and after you joined tdp how was it uh so before i joined ttp i was in the range of 90 to 110 so it used to hover around that range uh but i couldn't like go beyond that range for some time so that is when i decided i'll join like a proper group coaching uh so then after i joined ttp i also get, started giving like i also enrolled in the mocks right the test funda mocks and then i started giving more number of mocks started analyzing them well i attended the sessions that used to be there so so you give tips in that sessions also so i used to try all those tips and then the stock score started increasing perfect so uh when someone says that the scores are not increasing it's usually after 110 115 so with that after that score each and every mark is really difficult to get and which is why uh, we recommend our course because 90 se 110 tak to lana it's fir bhi not that difficult but 110 ke baad 130 1 point touch karne ke liye you need some really good tricks and tips that we at ttp provide because those were the exact ones which we had used lr mein jo bhi maine bata hai wahi main use karta tha harsh whatever you said you're in the quants that's the exact method that you should use for quants so guys there's just two to and a half months left for your cet it's on 18th and 19th of march tentatively so you can go for a course you can complete it roughly in around 4 weeks after which you can keep giving mocks and i'm sure the tricks that you've shown in the videos would really help you so uh sahi one last question related to ttb what was the uh, favorite thing of yours when it comes to ddb uh so i think one more major important thing about ttp is that you have access to six mentors right so you so they have actually given cet they know all your problems beforehand and you can approach them so i used to send my scores to my mentor and i used to give like ask for uh, tips like for example if i'm weaker at maths so what else i should do to improve my accuracy my speed everything how to overcome that plateau uh, also there used to be the sessions during weekends wherein uh, you used to guide all of the students that are there in ttp so i used to come to know what others are doing where where do the others what where, where do other people stand what scores they are in are they facing the same problem that i am facing so that used to be really helpful and even in the whatsapp group people used to send uh, their doubts and be, you used to answer the shortcuts and everything so even that was very helpful 
Perfect. Thank you for that, Sanega. So yeah. my next question is, uh, your CD twenty twenty two was jumbled, completely jumbled. Yes. So people often have this dilemma on as in how to attempt those kind of papers. Should we go with the easier questions first, the difficult questions first, or just go with the flow? So could you tell our viewers what your uh, way of attempting those questions were? Uh, so when I started preparing, uh, I just initially I went through the old section, like the sectional uh, CET paper that we used to have. So from there, we can build a base so as to we can understand which is, which one of the sections is our strongest, which one is the weakest. So after that, I started solving the jumbled papers. So even in the jumbled papers, I used to try different strategies. For example, if I am getting a VARC uh, question first, so do I want to solve it now? For example, if it is an RC, so do I want to solve it now or later? So every time you get a mock, you'll have to analyze that. If I can solve this question right now within a minute, then I'll solve it. Otherwise, I'll just go to the next question. So you can bookmark the question and then come back to it later. So the handles that are there in the interface, you can make good use of it, right? So if you want to attempt the question later, you can mark it. If you know that you won't be able to attempt the question at all, for example, it's just out of your uh, knowledge area. So you can just leave it altogether. So, so jab baad mein wo question pe, toh, you won't waste your time searching ke kaun sa question I have to do again, etc. So I think different strategies you have to try and the more mocks you give, the more you are acquainted with the pattern. Okay, so yours was going with the flow. Agar wo question lag rahe, easy hai, then just finish it off. Haan. If you think you can do it later, mark it. If you don't think that you can do it, don't even mark just it because it. then yeah. you waste your time coming back to it and then thinking yeah. and wasting your time. Yeah. Perfect. So there is a strategy which I used when I attempted CG 2021 just to see the paper pattern. So that's what I was doing, just going with the flow instead of choosing the easier questions or the difficult ones. Yeah. So people, you can <laughs> try different strategies, see what works for you. Like I say in every video. So just try whatever you feel like. Um. All right. So uh, or nowadays since um. Uh, not nowadays, right now. It's just two, two and a half months for CET 2023. So students are facing a lot of stress, anxiety. So could you tell them what you used to do two months, two and a half months before your CET so that you're not in that zone of anxiety, stress, and instead, you know, chilling, thodasa, not overthinking and other stuff. Yeah, so... Like stress is, I think it's normal. So everyone goes through stress and everything. But I think if you have to crack an exam, you'll have to keep your calm. So for me, I used to meet my friends whenever I used to be uh, stressed out or anything. I used to watch TV series, watch YouTube. So I was preparing solely for CET, right? So I didn't have a job or anything. I did have a lot of time to de-stress myself. So that's one thing that you can do another thing is if you have any such hobbies like meditation or you like dancing singing whatever you can do that and de-stress yourself um but i think uh, instead of stressing yourself out you should take the exam as a game so if you are able to score well you should be more motivated to study more and score more if not then you should tell yourself that i think i have so just give yourself a target that this is what I want to complete. This is the score that I want to reach. And then try to work towards this. There's no point in uh, getting demotivated after seeing a score. So for me, I used to keep a tab of my scores through that Excel sheet, which Anay had given. So I used to compare my scores with Anay, Amandeep, and all the, those two were the sheets that I uh, had access to. So I used to compare my scores with them. So every time I used to score less, I used to go back to the sheets and see that whether these people have also had their bad times. So there have been times where they have scored less. So I used to compare myself with them. And then I used to just gear myself up for the next mock. Yeah. So in, I'm not kind of a person that takes too much stress uh, after seeing the score. So, yeah. Perfect. So, guys, you can access that yeah. uh, Excel sheet that Sanika is talking about from our Telegram group. The link for which is in the description. And 
and yeah you can compare your scores with anais samandeep and see what you're doing how well you're doing so sign up on last question uh two and a half months left what do you think should be the preparation strategy for the aspirants um so firstly i think you should clear your concepts as fast as you can <clears throat> also if if you think that you have a long way to go to clear up the concepts just try to give yourself targets that this is what i'll do in this these these days and just start giving mocks i feel mocks are one thing that will take you through the exam for me i didn't specifically prepare for concepts as such my entire preparation was mocks and analysis yeah. so that is what i focused on and if you are not working anywhere and you just have to prepare the exam yeah. and just, you can take one mock for two days and analyze it thoroughly and that is what i would advise also um, mm -hmm. since this year the ct is in march so you have the other entire year right so even if ct doesn't go as planned so you have other exams so don't put all your faith on one exam so just prepare as much as you can give your best in ct don't get too much disheartened since you can prepare for other exams and maths now cat so yeah uh, so yeah it's there's no point in getting sad if your exam doesn't go well because there are 100 different exams yeah and there are 100 different great colleges so don't get disheartened if this doesn't go well just prepare the way you can the best possible manner just stay calm and composed during the d day and i'm sure it'll go well so guys uh, this is it thank you so much for being with us if you want to know anything about the course the ttp course you can text us on instagram the handle is the underscore top underscore percentile you can text us on telegram the link for which is in the description you can head to our website again the link for which is in the description or also we have a phone number where you can give a call or text and again it's in the description so thank you so much anika for being with us thank you for spending some time with us and helping our viewers and aspirants with their preparation strategies and other stuff thank you so much yeah thanks vidhan thank you